Okay, I'm going to, I'm getting close to covering. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the elevators off of the tailplane this evening while I wait for decision on the um, ESC I'm going to get on with a bit of woodwork I think it's about ready to cut off yeah so scalpel and straight edge just to remind you folks I'll put some carbon reinforced carbon elevator joiner and a bit of carbon reinforcement on the on the inside of the the elevators so should be pretty uh, stiff now it's already separate it should be already separated the elevators might be a little bit of road glue got in there doesn't feel too bad okay so there we are a pair of elevators one tailplane just clean up that cut with a little bit of sanding nice and square kind of looks pretty delicate now it's off just thinking actually that there's probably people all over the world doing our little peculiar hobby although those in the states and or australia will probably be asleep or just waking up i suppose but over here it's evening and the winters are starting to draw in and uh, this is the ideal pastime really I mean, it's only, well, it's just gone 10 in the evening. In the summertime, you could still be up the flying field, I guess. A flying field somewhere, that's for sure. I think that's getting there now. Perhaps I want to hinge it, actually. And then I can cover it. Let's find that hinge material. Although... What I'm thinking about, as you can see, I've got the carbon joiner goes to here. Now it doesn't give me a lot of wood to put a hinge in just there. In fact, it's only about a sixteenth. I'd be better off putting it here. But that's those. If I put it there and there, that's quite a long way. It's probably three inches, eight centimeters. Is that going to be too far from the hinge? Hopefully not. I think that's what I'm going to do. The decision has been made. The decision has been made, but the incision hasn't been made. Um, yeah. What I do with this, I normally just eyeball it, to be honest. Because uh, I want it to go all the way through, so it's got to be on the other side of the carbon. That looks pretty much in the centre. And the last one, three down, one to go. Actually, it's three down, five to go. Right, let's put that one about there. Yep, I think that'll do it. What I like to do is to put the hinges in. It always pushes the wood, opens the wood slightly above the line of the wood beside it. So I put the hinges in and sand it ever so slightly just to take off that little raised bit. Okay, now. Push it all the way in and then work the elevator, see what sort of gap it pulls out. 
it's pretty uniform it's about a half a millimeter 30 second yes all right that's all right guys i'm quite pleased with that let's just offer it up like you do and mock it up Very nice, very nice, very nice. Might have to adjust the slot in the fin though because I have to put the fin. Mm. Could, uh, always worth offering up, you see, because now I can't get the fin on with the tail plane already in place. So I'm going to have to put the uh, sorry the fin stroke rudder. I'm going to have to hinge that, drop it in place, and then glue the tail plane on. That mid clears nicely. Squared up. So that's that. There's plenty of movement. I wouldn't have thought you, I'm going to need more than well. Quarter inch, three eighths up and down. Sit in the fin there. I think that's okay. Yeah, you can see that all right. Nice. There we go. It's going to fall off backwards, but there we are. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I've just plugged in my heating iron. Tonight, I'm going to have a go at uh, the tailplane and elevator covering it. And we'll see how we get on. So this is heating up. So I'll pop that over over here. Put that rule down. Look. And here's the piece in question. Now, if you remember from an earlier video, I fitted the or hinged, I should say. Uh, the elevators using this very thin plasticky mylar type material the hinges are exactly opposite these spars so should be easy to pick up again so i'll just pull that off and at the moment all the hinges are staying in the elevator that's fine and i'll just give this one last little sand hiver and diver here and there a little rough bit there where I cut the hole a little bit there and a little bit there let's get the covering material bear with Now I think there was a loose piece in here. Where is it? There it is. That's enough to be getting on with, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Hot, hot, hot. Know where your covering iron is and don't put your hand on it. Put that over there and change my glasses let's give them a quick clean bit of a smudge on it okay the iron is up to temperature I need a pair of scissors which is just in this little box here <coughs> and we're going to cover the tail plane i'm happy with that I know what you're thinking, but he hasn't put the balsa lock on yet. You're quite right. So I'm going to turn this off a minute. Right, first job is to put some balsa lock on the balsa wood. So I'm going to, I don't think I need to stir it, but I will. Pull that off and put on the balsa lock. Do -do. After a 
day at work, how pleasant it is to come home and work on your plane. But we all know that, don't we? For those of you who are retired, of course, you might have forgotten what it's like. I'm lucky because I've got a job I really enjoy. So it's not a job at all. It's just different to model building. Mind you, if you did model building for a living, it would cease to become a pleasure, I think. Most things that you have to do when you turn your hobby into a business um, become less pleasurable, don't they? You see what I'm doing? Probably not. Let me, um, let me bend you down a little bit. There we are. So, when you do it for a living, it's not quite the same as doing it as a hobby. I can't believe anyone is sitting there watching me do this, to be honest. It's like watching paint dry, or in this case, balsa lock. Surely people have got their own things to do, own models to build. Maybe you're watching it on uh, as you commute or in your lunch hour at work or anywhere. Putting it a little bit more around on the end grains because, as we all know, the balsa wood end grain soaks up anything you put on it. There we go. Let that one dry. And while that one's drying, I'm going to do the elevators. It's like to say some of you are watching because you're interested in this build and you've subscribed to my channel, which is brilliant. Um, but by now you probably realise that these little models aren't the only ones I do. I do the um, play around with the bigger models as well. Power models as well as slope soaring. So... Not everything will appeal to everybody, but it'd be great if somebody watched my video that thought, do you know what? That looks a lot of fun. I'm going to have a go at this other branch of the hobby. and Because this is doing the other bits and bobs of a different branches is what keeps you, um, keeps you interested in the whole hobby. You learn new skills, subscribe to a different forum or two, and... learn lots of new things and uh, you get more satisfaction from the branch of the hobby that you do and uh, you get more online friends probably possibly even real real life friends real life you know what i mean all right we'll want that again when i put the other side on but we'll put that to one side for the minute while I'm just waiting for that to dry, I'll show you one of my Micro Aces models, which is waiting to be maidened. What was that? Oh, it's all right. This one's waiting to be maidened. It's the um, Micro Aces sop with triplane. Only weighs a couple of ounces, but it's 1S. Rudder elevator control. And uh, it's made out of two mil depth and foam different construction technique but it's got uh, rigging which is rather fun it's the famous Dixie sort of triplane and uh, it's got to be about 12 inch span I suppose not very big you can see it against my hand but it's, um, it's gonna be a nice little flyer they all fly very nicely so 
so I'm looking forward to trying this one out possibly at the next indoor session should take it along really but uh, pretty little right. aeroplanes just fits perfect Put that glove off don't need that Lid on that I think the iron's heating up and feel it what are you up to now it's just about there that was quick okay while we're waiting with that actually I'll just turn it down stop it oh I don't know stop it um, heating up more than it needs to for the minute this is the old test we used to do just put it on see if it just curls up a bit so it's not curling up it's actually on 113 at the moment just push it up to 116 see what happens it's got no glue on it actually so it's not going to stick hmm. well it's not melting it anyway that's the main thing um, I lost my little speaker where are you there you are the clip of course how's this doing no that's not dry yet I've made the undercarriage up I think I've sold show, showed you this probably earlier on I've put a couple of uh, carbon fiber rods up the leading edge of the front undercarriage leg which glue into the back of the um, front former f1 so that should and the axle itself is carbon and i've put two little bits of plywood as to act because it the, the axle is going to be they give it a bit more strength the axle is going to be glued and the wheels are going to run freely i've probably shown you this already but i've just glued a piece of brass tube inside half a wheel i'm only using half a wheel each side because um it saves weight and you're never going to notice as it flies past that the inside of the wheel is I'll probably paint it a light color of course but a little bit of brass tube <laughs> yeah yeah no I think the bit of brass tube is lighter than the half of the wheel I took off so that will go on there and that will just spin on there I might stick a piece of uh, say paper on the inside just to simulate just to cover up the fact it's hollow wheel probably will actually it's a good idea actually I'm not going to say I might I'm saying I will so there we are how's this drying let's have a look let's have a look at you Mm, it's getting there it's not there yet Let's see the other side no it's not there yet I've got a little lump there just squash that in a bit it's getting there not quite there yo Let's pop it back on there. I think I might have put this um, iron on slightly too previously. I'll turn it off momentarily so it didn't take long to heat up. Pop it there. I'm not sure if the balsa lock, if I can, it says for the other stuff that you can. Um, put it on and it'll activate weeks later I'm not sure I want to do that although I could put it on the tailplane while I'm waiting it's a damn pretty bird this actually isn't it this is what I like the f about the first world war airplanes they're so stylish I mean look at that that is a thing of beauty hmm. 
They certainly knew how to design aeroplanes back in them days. Yeah. I'm going to pause the video for a couple of minutes until this is dry and I'll get on with the covering. I hope this is the right way round. It does look... Yeah, it definitely is grainier one side than the other. Right. I'll pause it a minute. Uh, I'll just pop this back on. It's coming up nicely. Let's change glasses. And I'll do that side first. Definitely the right way around. What are we up to? 113, nearly there. Let's just start it off with a little tack, see what happens. Hmm, seems to be sticking. Obviously I'm not going to um, stretch it until both sides are done. Just go around the edges like this. I don't know how much this is going to shrink. So I'll pull it reasonably tight. It's not as tight as I'd like, but I'm sure it'll be all right. Thing is, you can always strip it off and do it again, so it's not the end of the world if things don't quite work out as you'd planned. Over it around. Actually, I'm going to have to put balsa lock, aren't I, on the to get the film to stick to the film. That's why it says on the instructions you can use CA or something like that. Perhaps I can use balsa lock. Everything's a steep learning curve. Let's put that in there. Like that. A little bit on there. Like that. See that? Don't know if you can. Hold it up a bit. Let's just cut this a little bit. Uh, let's cut it there and cut it on the corner, say there. Help it around a little bit and there and up the top here, one there, one there, one there, 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 let's go all the way around. So all I've done is to cut it, just to help it around the corners a bit, so nothing technical there. It's great to be at some sort of covering stage. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is Cliff going to use a scalpel or scissors to cut around that edge? Well, do you know what? I haven't got a clue. I'm not sure I've got a pair of sharp scissors here, so I might just try the scalpel. That's the best way to do this. Like that. I'm just cutting this around so as I can let 
can probably be cut off in there. I can't get the thing, can't get the iron into the little tiny details. If it's a problem, I can always pop a little bit of white paint in there. Pardon me, just to cover it up, just to disguise the fact the film ends short. That was a bit hot on the end of my finger then. Do you see me crying like a baby? No, you don't. That's the wonder of editing. No, oh, I'm fooling. I haven't stopped it to nurse my finger. Right, nearly there. Nearly there. Perhaps I ought to move the camera in a bit closer for the other half. Right, okay. That's the basic thing covered. I'm going to seal down the edges now to bring them around the corner prior to putting on the other side. I think a little bit of balsa lot isn't going to hurt on the covering material. Where the iron is just touching the edge of this, I can feel it dragging on the balsa lot because because it's glue and it's activating as soon as the heat touches it. The balsa lock did bring up the grain of the balsa slightly, but the heat had put it down again. <laughs> I was going to I had considered a red online forum. Um it's a good idea to paint the frame with a, a, a thin down um, coat of dope just so as it can bring the grain up and then you can sand it off. Um, but I guess that's probably for tissue in a model, like pre pre um, pre dope in the surface really. Right, let's turn that off a minute. Just got a little bit in there to cut out. Okay, folks, so this is one half done. Um, still got to stretch it, of course, but I'm not going to do that until I've got the other side on and I'll try and stretch them both at the same time. But I think I will put a little bit of balsa lock on that on that edge of the film. Just the slightest hint. Just so as I can have something to stick to. Go around the edge. Just the slightest amount. It's called balsa lock after all, not film lock. Okay, we'll let that dry. Quick tidy up here. Get these off cuts in the bin. Static, got static. Okay, so how's that looking? That little corner's not quite on that. I just want nicking off. Beautiful. Of course, actually, most of this is covered with a transfer anyway, um, uh, which uh, 
hopefully it'll stick on this stuff. If not, I'll have to paint it. it I think it takes paint quite well, according to the instructions, so I might end up painting it anyway. See how well the transfers. I had planned initially just to um, uh, scan them in and, uh, well, because it's got the Indian head logo on the side. I was going to say, uh, scan them in and, and stick on the paper. Which I might, I'll try, obviously, especially with the Indian head logo. I can't replicate that by hand. So uh, that feels like it's dry. It's coming up to temperature. So let's put this one on about there. Oh, I said I was going to reposition the camera, didn't I? Can I do that? Let's have a go. Excuse me, moi. All right, okay. We'll start by making sure that's in a reasonably good place. Looks okay. It's not back to front. Nope. Okay, here we go. This is on 108, 118. No, just switching off. Little tack there. What I'll do, I'll put this tissue over the work surface. In other words, a fin. See if I can't do something with it. Looks pretty good. Let's turn it over. Heat up a little bit more. Just being being finicky here, but. Cool. And then we can offer it up a little bit more just in that corner. Okay. Let's offer it up. to be very careful when I cover the wings I think because it does does pull it a bit not as loose as it was but it's not bad it's pretty easily so there we are one covered rudder I'm happy with that. Now I just wanted to say thank you for looking in again. And the next video will be covering the elevator and tailplane. And wings and fuselage. Thanks for looking in. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, bye.